Now, uh, you, weren't, you weren't with us that night, but yeah. you've been arrested as part of protest activity. And I know you've had some doozies with these yeah. same police officers. And by the way, uh, the cops, the, they never got back to my question specifically, which one of them was, do they have a policy? on processing uh, where they where they put transgender, male, yeah, female. I can, I can answer that one uh, right. a uh, The only thing they got back to me is, well, we haven't received any internal affairs uh, <laughs> complaints, which I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I'm pretty confident they've received complaints over the last uh, couple months. Yeah, so um, my name is Amy Jade. I'm going to talk a little bit about some previous arrests that I experienced. Uh, the first one was at the LGBTQIA protest, which was um, a bigger one in St. Louis that was slightly in response to a Trump administration, um, but also in response to bathroom bills being established within Missouri. Uh, what happened during my arrest was uh, targeted arrests for being a protest leader. Um, and then during the processing phase, uh, I asked to see medical um, personnel because you, if you are arrested and you sign a paper where you do not see me medical personnel, you cannot legally process that as a civil case in the future. Um, so I had that medical pro uh, personnel in interaction. Uh, the individual who processed me asked me very like pointed, very kind of disgusting questions in regards to certain things. She asked if I was completed. I was like, well, I mean, I don't know if I've really come to a full spiritual completion in my life. I'm still kind of looking around for religious aspects, but yeah, I'm pretty complete like spiritually. But uh, she was like, no, I mean like you're junk. I think I think you probably lost her at spiritual. I'm not yeah, sure they know what that means. Yeah, definitely yeah. did. Um, but then as I tried to correct some of the ways that she was talking about things, uh, she likened me to a crackhead and a whore um, and told me, I don't care what you are, you're still a man, get back in your cell. At this point, I was being held in solitary cell, which it's important to state that the solitary cells in the Justice Center do not have phones. So whereas the other cells do have some amount of, like, uh, the processing cells and the holding cells down in the bottom floor. They have a phone where you can reach out, get in contact with lawyers, you can get in contact with jail support, whatever. I did not have that. Um, and if you're held in solitary, you, don't, you do not have that. Um, after that experience with uh, being held in solitary for a time frame, at that point I was with another trans woman who was locked up with me. Uh, we stayed in that very small cell together for a time frame. Uh, eventually they processed us upstairs where I was, this protest ran at the same time as the Mardi Gras parade in St. Louis. And so there was a drunk tank filled with drunk men. Um, and they paraded me specifically because of me telling the other protesters what their rights were. You don't have to answer these questions, etc. They paraded me back and forth in front of these men. And they kept threatening to throw me and the other trans feminine trans woman protester and with these drunk men. Did they, uh, did they say anything to the drunk tank men that you were transgender or anything like that? Uh, so it was somehow leaked uh, one way or another. They did confiscate my clothes at one point and I was wearing a jumpsuit. So I was stripped of my clothes, um, paraded back and forth in front of a drunk tank, threatened to be thrown in with the drunk tank. Um, they did not confiscate my shoes just fun fact, I guess. Uh, but that was the first arrest. Eventually, I got let out, but the other two were held for 24 hours. I want to move back. Yeah. What was the reason they told you they were stripping you down naked and taking you out of your cell to go in front of uh, So, men? so um, they did not strip me naked to walk in front of the protester, or not the protester, sorry, uh, the drunk tank. However, they took me to a back room where it was like a shower told me I had to take off my clothes, replace them with a red jumpsuit. I was the only person in the um, situation who was arrested, who was put into this jumpsuit. And it was multiple hours into my arrest and only a couple hours prior to my release. I assume it was a punitive measure, um, but I can't say for certain. Uh, they paraded me in front of the drunk tank in this red jumpsuit um, before, or in the red jumpsuit and in my clothes prior. Um, I don't know what the reason was for anything like that. Uh, they also marked a bag of my clothes with my last name first, and my last name is Maxwell, which could go as a male's name. Um, I think that there was this element of let's try to, like, offend this person in any way necessary. I was called ma'am, sir. 
um, that, it, those kind of words and everything during the first arrest. Um, and that was, yeah, that was that whole thing. Sure. Uh, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, they, they only strip, they only strip search you to change you if you're being housed. Yeah. If you're if you're being there for the 24 hours or however many hours, they're not about to house you. They're not about to send you to a unit or a cell, so they're going to release you. They don't. They they never go through the process of changing your clothes and taking it. They actually was something that they were trying to do to fuck oh, with you. Yeah. yeah. And uh, obviously Ty would know better, but terms like that. That's kind of like some slavery shit right there. Yeah. Uh, talking um, about you like I would, you're. I would be very, I would be very hesitant to ever try to make that kind of connection yeah. because my experiences are, are not the experiences mm -hmm. of Black Americans in this country. But I would say that yes, it was an intimidation factor. It was trying to talk down to me. It was trying to dehumanize me to any degree. Mm -hmm. um, that was the first arrest. The second arrest was another targeted arrest by the St. Louis Metro Police Department in front of the workhouse, which y'all know about. If you would like to learn more about it, Google it. Um, the, the workhouse jail, I mean, I have to look into it more, but basically they have people there with no charges, a lot of them just there. It's, it's, like, for, it's, like it's a debtor's yeah. prison. It's a debtor's prison in all reality. Um, however, so that arrest took place. Uh, that was the time that I was held in solitary by myself for um, six to eight hours. I really don't know because there was no ability for me to get in contact with any amount of technology to see time or anything. Um, I was called various things the whole time I was locked up in solitary, made fun of, mocked. That's pretty standard. Uh, it wasn't as bad as the first time, but I was asked to take a pregnancy test. Uh, just from the amount of confusion that was going on in there, they made me take a pregnancy test, uh, then dump it out, and then I was sent back into solitary, waited around for a little bit of time, finally got out of solitary then went back in again or something like that, and then finally eventually got out. I don't get it. They made you take a pregnancy test for what? To like... So the confusion was um, my appearance is very androgynous. I understand that. I'm cool with that. I respect it. Um, but because of those aspects, me going in, I'm very racially ambiguous. I'm very androgynous. I go into these situations. They mislabel me constantly. They don't really know what they're working with here. So every time my paperwork goes in front of a new person uh, within the Justice Center, they get more confused and they don't know what to label me as. And so I get moved around for a bunch of different things. Um, so when I went in there the second time, I think it was the same medical personnel, but I honestly don't remember. Um, but she had said like, oh, they miswrote you all down. Like they put white male, you're not those. And I'm like, Weep womp. And um, then she like changed all my stuff around, sent me back into solitary, said, we're gonna make you take a pregnancy test. I'm like, hey, bless your, bless your heart, but it's not gonna come out. If it does, we got, we got better things to worry about. Like we're about to make some money. Um, but- To essentially what, like prove you're female? No, it was, it was protocol. Um, so it was a protocol thing. Uh, that they were going to be like, you take a pregnancy test, it's protocol, we have to do that. I've heard more information about that where that's possibly a way that they get you on drug charges by taking your urine. Um, I don't want to be that paranoid, but you can. Um, uh, so that was basically kind of the situation. Did the pregnancy test, uh, then dump it out while someone is shouting, that's a man in there, that's a man in there. And I'm like, all right, honey, cool. Um, and then, yeah, eventually get out that night, but uh, solitary the entire time. Again, like you two have said, it's it's a shitty system of how they hold you indefinitely, mock, just a lot of mockery going on, and it's just frustrating, and it can really get to your ability to just kind of like hold on to your own identity and have that kind of confidence in yourself. Um, I know now for a fact that I'm listed by St. Louis Metro Police Department as a female impersonator um, within their uh, police reports. Um, that is what I'm known as, a, a local female impersonator. Now that's your unwritten reports, that's what you're? Yep, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that's pretty fun. Uh, yeah, the police know who I am. Uh, my name is familiar among them. My face is very familiar among them. And uh, that's oh. how I'm known. I think they're law enforcement impersonators, if you if you ask me. Um, 
because it's really a legalized mafia what's, what's going on here because there's a lot of backroom dealing uh, in St. Louis and elsewhere.